Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'm back again with another video. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at this device right in here, which is the Nokia C30. So I've been having this device, I think for the past three months and I did an unboxing, which I will link it on my description section below so that you can go and see it. So this is a Nokia C30, which was announced in July 2021 and it was officially uh, available in the market for sales in October. 2021 so this is what we consider a budget phone or maybe a mid-range phone depending on where you are on this world or maybe depending on your affordability so i'm saying that because of the price the price of this phone is going for about uh 135 us dollars uh which is uh, equivalent to 100 euros and if you're buying it in south africa where i'm based you basically will be buying this for about 2400 rent depending on which retailing by one but the recommended price is 2400 rands in south africa so basically that's what actually what makes this device a budget phone which is way way affordable uh considering the fact that uh it comes in with so much great features that most of us will really need in a smart device so let's jump right into it so in this video i'm going to be sharing my experience and actually the good and the bad that I actually discovered in the time that I was using this phone. So I managed to get a SIM card that I put on this phone, which means that I was able to make a receive call on this one and actually do some work uh, on this device. So starting with the uh, screen. So this screen has, uh, this Nokia C30 has a 6.82 uh, inches uh, of a display, which according to Nokia, they said is the first of its kind uh on the smart device on a nokia smart device so basically this is the first nokia that has a larger screen than any other nokia that they've made yes this is not a flagship or maybe top of the range when it comes in but in terms of the size this is one that has the largest screen in all nokias that were ever made uh since the history of nokia we're looking at about 720 by 600 pixels which is yes uh it's not really so impressive uh most of us today we are on on the 4k or high definition obviously we need a phone which is highest which has higher refresh rate this is not going to give you that uh honestly speaking and obviously yes you're gonna have to work with that depending obviously looking at the price that you actually have paid so yeah it's not so good and obviously even the density this is we're looking at about 257 ppi which is way way low than average phones that we have because most of the phones they have 400 plus uh when it comes into the density and this one is giving you like 257 it's way way too less than what we get on average phone so you're not actually going to get too much when it comes into the display yes this is an lcd not an led and already people are having flagship phones they are using amoleds and retina display on their phones which is this is not anywhere closer to that and another thing that i've noticed is basically it's it's more of resistive which is what nokia is mainly known for nokia are, are known for resistive screens which i think most of people are saying that's actually what made them lose the market back in the days uh, which is obviously something that comes below the fact that they didn't want to change their os yes it's running in android we're going to look into that but the screen is actually resistive you actually when you press it you get to feel that resistance whereas uh other screens like iphones and the uh, samsung you actually get in the amulets which are very very responsive which is uh what most people want on their phone today so on this one you won't actually get at that and obviously when you press on the screen you actually hear the vibrating back actually showing uh responding to you that yes you have tapped so if it doesn't do that which means you either didn't press hard enough or actually didn't press anything at all which is uh something that is a little bit of a downside but most people can work with if you haven't worked with it or if you haven't used a flagship before you won't actually even notice that but however it's a good screen to work with uh when you're actually watching a video you actually get to see uh end to end of your video uh without no limitation so it's basically one of the devices that you can use with that another thing that i like is when you actually group your apps together it actually gives this thing whereby it allows you to uh to reach uh those applications you want to reach without you having to uh move your finger like what i'm doing now you basically can reach them from there so it creates like a small box like this which basically all the apps that are on your google apps you can actually control them or reach them out from this box here instead of uh filling up the whole screen which is a good thing because the the screen this is quite big imagine by the time you put in the case on the phone it really uh, becomes more bulkier and another thing that you notice there's actually a chin down here at the bottom uh, it's quite big for my liking and obviously that's where you get the nokia logo that you actually see that yeah 
um yeah it's a nokia brand and stuff it's really hard nowadays to actually find the phone writing their names on front of the phone because this is like a screen area we don't want to see anything beside the screen itself but however nokia decided to put their name in front of the phone which for me it was not necessary so enough about the the, the display so i want us to just look at the, the look and feel of the phone itself so the one that i have here with me in particular it's a gray uh, they call it it's a, it's a green, not gray, it's a green, but however, I can see the darker green uh, looking at the fact that it is uh, reflective green and stuff, not really so military, not so shiny. And the material that it has, it has some sort of lines that you can actually feel it. And this is obviously uh, a tough polycarbonate shell, which is actually hard to break. <laughs> I didn't test that, but that's according to Nokia. So basically, I think it makes it harder uh, for this phone to break however i would still recommend you to put in your case on this phone if it's going to be the phone that you're going to be using it regarding regardless of the fact that they said it's a it's a hard uh, polycarbonate case which is very very strong when it comes into protecting the phone yes it is removable and it, it is replaceable you can actually remove this and buy another one and cover this you can actually get a different color to actually replace on this one uh something this is quite weird uh considering the phones nowadays because most of the phone now we actually don't even get a place to open them besides maybe when you're inserting the sim card or maybe the sd card but this one you can actually have to remove the whole case which is um i don't know we are no longer used to to that it's even funny because even if you remove the case you're actually not even able to reach uh the battery because the battery is also covered inside but however that's basically the way you actually insert your memory card as well as your dual sim because this phone supports dual sim however as much as it supports dual sim it doesn't support 5g so there is no 5g coverage on this phone it's just your lte 3g and 4g and it ends there so if you're looking for a 5g device this is not one of them it is good in terms of network coverage and obviously the area that i live in uh because i live in the suburban area is the coverage is always good i've been running in uh, a telco and a, and a Vodacom network in this one phone which both networks do well and then another thing that you actually find on this phone here is actually this phone still support a 3.5 milli jack for audio you can actually plug in your headphones so if actually in the box that they that you, you get this phone in you actually find in uh, headphones that they have supplied for you to use you know, with this 3.5 milli jack yes most of the phones nowadays they don't do that they don't have that and probably maybe some people say the least they could have done is to give you maybe a type c uh headphones that will work with this but however another thing i'm afraid i'm gonna have to disappoint you on that because this doesn't support type c yes i know most of people are expecting it to be type c yes it doesn't support type c this uh when we look at the bottom it still support a micro usb which is yeah it's still a challenge it's still a challenge to use a micro usb something that i have tested so two things uh the first thing which is a challenge is when you charge the phone it takes way longer to charge the phone and the only factor that i saw is because it was using a micro usb not a type c which is was not quick to charge the phone also another thing that i've tested was when i was doing data transfer when you're doing data transfer on this phone it's actually not fast because of that and obviously i use the same brick when i was charging uh the iphone which was quicker and but this phone charge it uh not so fast because of the cable the only difference was the cable that i was using in between uh honestly speaking yes it's a downside for you to actually get a micro usb on the phone but nonetheless yes it still does the work and i think maybe some can say yes it's compromised because the battery size so looking at the battery size this has a 6000 milliamp battery which is good and according to nokia this will last you three days and yes it does last three days uh it's sort of balanced looking at the device itself because the screen doesn't take much battery because it's an lcd obviously a liquid um crystal display they don't actually take much as a retina or the oleds the oleds are the one that took much um, power so this one is just a normal lcd obviously yes it's an older generation when <laughs> when it comes into those things but yes it doesn't take much and obviously the uh, os that it's running this is a running android 11 which 
is the go edition so the go edition is basically made for smaller phones it doesn't require much power it doesn't require much resources which means it won't take much battery obviously and then this phone uh the one i have in particular has a 3 gig ram which when you look at the usage it's not uh it doesn't get much used compared to the other devices whereby you find that some apps that to crash and all those kind of things so you don't actually exhaust much from the battery so 6000 milliamp yes it does last you three days sometimes plus for me because this is not my main device it is actually goes beyond that uh this phone the last time we charged it was uh, i think it was on wednesday and then it's still having about okay i'm not able to see now but this is more than this is about 54 percent yes 54 percent of battery available now and then it will show you that there's more than two days plus for you to actually use this phone and then you actually get a week plus on standby if you're not using this phone you'll actually get a week plus on the battery yes it's actually quite good so basically the amount of the battery that you have with you you can actually charge your iphone 12 twice with the amount of this battery that this phone has actually twice plus yeah basically that's it so another downside well probably not a feature because this is not a flagship this doesn't support a reverse charging so you will not actually be able to draw battery from this phone to another phone which was going to be a good thing actually to actually have a wireless charging feature which allows you to do a reverse charging and charge another phone even if it's at a five watt it was going to be good because i mean there's no point of having so much battery that you're not going to be benefiting from it so uh it's a little bit of a downside but yes it's a feature that comes in with his mid-range phone which i'm not complaining about it just you know just something to to put it out there so basically that's it 6000 mm is so much uh, uh uh for a phone especially for a phone like this which doesn't consume uh too much power yes so another thing that we have in here is the the cameras i want to look at the cameras to be honest with you yes the cameras are not so good uh we're looking at the 30 megapixel uh wide lens which you would expect it to actually get so much uh light in and give you like high quality pictures so the pictures are not as good as uh, other phones uh, or other cameras even the ones that has 12 megapixels so obviously the technology that lies in behind the lens of the camera is not as good as when you compare to others but however it's able to capture decent uh images especially when you're doing outside i wouldn't recommend you to do indoors unless you are sure or certain of the light that you have but however this is not good for me when you actually took it indoor pictures but out outdoor yes it's okay it's decent you can do that and then it also has a two megapixel uh, depth camera which for me i don't really see much work of it because even its portraits they are not uh as decent as i would say yes it's a it's a picture that you can actually use it out there uh it's quite crazy even when you send it to another device it actually becomes worse and then on the front it is a front facing camera which uh it's a five megapixel they didn't actually disclose if whether it's a depth or telephoto or what but it's just a standard five megapixel camera you know five megapixel camera it's too little it's very very small i think for me yes it goes in with the budget and stuff so yes it does it's a five megapixel however what i like it they, they were able to put in uh, a facial recognition facial recognition sensor which enables you to unlock and lock this phone or rather to unlock this phone using your face so you can actually enroll your face and use the face to actually unlock the phone which is a feature that mostly you get in on the flagship phones uh, but however nokia did a good thing by putting it in here so you can actually instead of you having to type in your your pattern or your pin code or your passcode to unlock the phone you can actually press the power button and then you look at the phone and then it unlocks the phone and then you are there you are on the on the on the home screen and you're able to see your apps and everything which is quite good so that secret feature i like it so much the accuracy yes it's good it's decent something that i can live with something that i really really like and i appreciate having it on this device because yes honestly speaking uh the estate of the screen on this phone is quite massive for you to reach all the corners so they did a great thing by having uh the facial recognition to actually unlock your phone and obviously extending on that looking at the back just below the camera right in here there is a, a fingerprint sensor which allows you to unlock the phone by just placing your finger in there so this one i will say out of 10 i'll give it seven because it's not 
uh so accurate i don't know why i feel like facial recognition for me works much better than the fingerprint so you your finger has to be in a certain position for it to be able to unlock well, yes it is easier to reach there but however unfortunately the response on the phone is not so good in such a way that you're able to unlock your phone quicker but yes it's a good thing that is uh they have actually included in there actually appreciate the fact that yes they've considered that because uh the phone is actually quite big so let's look at the internal specification of this phone yeah, like i said it comes in with android 11 the go edition which mostly you'll find it on the very very cheap entry level android phone which you can usually get one for like 50 dollars you know those kind of phones and i feel like they could have done it the same thing and just not include the uh the go edition but there's a normal android because i mean the phone is is big and then it has good resources so 3 gig internal ram is sufficient enough to actually run a normal android and then obviously it has 32 gigs of storage whereby you can actually store your all your media your images and videos so i think they should have actually included uh, a normal android however i'm not complaining obviously all this whole thing will clear hundred back to the to the budget and i won't actually say much about why they could have done right and wrong but with my experience i think this phone is capable enough to actually handle that so uh another downside that i've actually picked up on this phone is basically the cover the cover part so basically when you, you you've put in uh maybe a silicone case like this and you want to remove it high chances when you remove it it actually comes up with a phone cover or it doesn't want to come out at all it becomes harder i think at some point when i was taking it out I was able to take it even with the cover of the phone so this is one thing that you need to be cognizant of so there's actually a better way to actually take it out by actually holding the phone on one side so that you didn't actually grab out the back of the phone so you pull it out like that and then you take it out if you don't do that you will see yourself actually taking out the uh the back cover of the phone which is something that you don't really want to do so to actually take out the cover there is a corner one of the corner uh allows you to i think it's this one here so yeah so the bottom left corner you just push your finger in there and then that's actually how you take out the cover so yeah this is something that you can replace you can actually get a different color and then use it to cover your phone and then looking at the phone while it's open so this is the battery section you can see see the screws that are exposed basically this is how you actually get your battery replaced or removed should it be damaged or maybe it can become worn out so that's how you're actually going to go about doing that. And then right over here, this is where you're actually finding your dual SIM cards. And then this is where you'll put, you'll put in your uh, micro SD if you want to extend your storage. So you can actually do that. And then right here, this is where you actually find your stereo speaker. So if you're playing your music, it will be playing from here. And then right here on top, there is a microphone and also another microphone right down here the bottom so basically this is the one that you're using for the call and then if you're using a loudspeaker you will actually use this one on top right over there so that has been it about this uh video and i'm not sure if there's anything that i've missed but i've actually covered most of the things that i have spent with the phone so in terms of the application like when you actually doing things like your zoom uh obviously those are standard uh it works well with the headphones that nokia have provided yeah uh, and then if you're doing teams or you're doing your google meet or hangout you can actually work well with this and actually like the screen because if you want to see your participants you're able to see them on the screen it responds well and actually like the fact that on youtube they actually give us the full youtube app instead of the go edition which i don't really like at all the only challenge that i have is obviously the resolution i'm, I'm not gonna get like sometimes i don't even get 1080 and it does scale up to 1080 because this is not a 1080 display it's basically less than that uh but however i'm able to watch my video at a uh, at a full screen which is something that is good and uh obviously with the things like calls uh it's quite good it has a uh, long lasting battery like i said and you're able to do your course even on loudspeaker without having the fear of uh losing or wasting the battery it's quite very good i like to keep it standard because it's not really my main uh, phone and i don't have actually much uh, i don't actually put much on it so that has been it about this nokia so do check the previous video when i was doing the unboxing where i actually touched most of the things that i might not have touched on this phone so you can watch these videos vice versa so thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in my next video
拜。